practice. There was a survey of CEOs that demonstrated 58% of CEOs say that automation is going to reduce jobs in their companies. Only 16% of CEOs claim that automation is actually going to create new jobs. And so one way to get a handle on the fact that there may be fewer jobs in the future is to broaden the category of what we think about as a job. We might want to th start uh, imagining jobs to include things like caregivers, uh, people who are mentoring other people, individuals who are performing valuable community service projects. Those are things that we don't really value, we don't count of those things as jobs, but they're doing valuable things for the community. One of the shifts we're seeing in the workplace right now is the rise of the sharing economy, or some people refer to it as the gig economy. And oftentimes, these are temporary jobs without benefits attached to them. If you look at the European Union, for example, half of the jobs created since 2010 were temporary jobs. And so in the United States, given the fact that most healthcare benefits and retirement benefits are attached to jobs, if you either don't have a job or if you have a temporary job without benefits, that's going to create a real problem just in terms of how are people going to get health care and how are they going to earn credit towards their retirements. People may end up having a lot more leisure time. Uh, a lot of people have outside interests in terms of uh, music, uh, theater, art, or other types of projects. Right now, people are stressed out. You have to work uh, long hours. Uh, you're tired. You don't have time to pursue your hobbies and interests. If we handle this transition well, we may end up in a situation in two or three decades where workers have a much better situation, where they can earn a living by working fewer hours than currently is the case, and they still have time to pursue outside interests, uh, take care of family members, or engage in other activities that benefit the overall community.